my dear comrades brothers and sisters from the ordnance factories and all defense establishments at the outset i am grateful to you on behalf of the all india defense employees federation for all the support and cooperation whatever you have extended during the last more than 3 months period when we are in the field of agitation and struggle against the arbitrary decision taken by the present government of india violating all the previous assurances and agreements to convert our 219 years old indian ordnance factories into a corporation into a public sector after the announcement of the finance minister on 16th may 2020 from 17th may onwards the three federations after forging an historical unity the aidf indwf bpms and the other unions and federations and associations we are in a war path for justice for national security for defense preparedness and of course for protecting our status as a defense civilian employee as a central government employee on the 4th of august 2020 after more than 99% of the employees of ordnance factories and the dgqa units inside the factories gave a mandate that against the decision of the government to corporatize the ordnance factories we have to proceed with an indefinite strike we know we are in an odd situation there is a serious threat in the country about the spread of the most dangerous covid-19 virus throughout the country section 144 has been imposed the state civil authorities the police are not allowing more than 5 people to assemble in a single place at a time factory managements are not giving permission to conduct gate meetings or demonstrations but in spite of all these odd situation and difficulties i salute you comrades overcoming all these crises and difficulties you are preparing yourself and you have prepared yourself to ensure the success of our independent strike because it is not a strike for our economic demands it is not a strike for demanding increase in our wages it is a demand for protecting saving the defense industry that it should not land in the hands of private corporates the preparations have built up tremendous pressure on the government and unfortunately a democratically elected government instead of approaching the problem in a democratic manner within the framework of industrial democracy and the labor laws have thought in a different manner which no other government in the past has thought about crush the strike harass the workers create panic amongst the workers threaten the workers about consequences and they have started organizing a very big list of retired army generals brigadiers major generals and they have been asked to write series of articles series of articles against the ordnance factories against the employees of the ordnance factories against the products of the ordnance factories against the quality of our products 
about the workmanship of our words. And we were forced to issue rebutals and counters against all those articles. Some have been published and wherever it is not published, we have managed through social media. And you are all supported in that. In this situation, when we were all preparing for the strike, when few days are left for the strike, the government came with an announcement that our strike is illegal. They have not only issued letter to the federations, they have directed the general managers to issue individual letters to all the 80,000 employees of the ordnance factories. Threatening them that if you participate in strike, since the strike being an illegal strike, you will have to face the consequences. This was how the government approached the strike. Our president S.L. Patak Saab is in the trade union field for more than 50 years. Five decades he has completed. I have also almost completed 40 years. Four decades in the trade union movement. The government thought that we doesn't know the rules and regulations. We do not know how to go ahead with the strike. They thought easily they can declare the strike illegal without knowing that they are not having any authority to declare our strike as illegal. They are not the authority to declare the strike illegal under the Industrial Dispute Act 1947 if at all our strike was illegal. That power was vested only with a labor court under the Industrial Dispute Act 1947. But they have taken a position that uh, once they declare uh, right the strike is illegal, the federations will go back. The workers will go back. The workers will have panicky in their mind. This was the approach of the government. But the three federations jointly gave a befitting reply to the government. And after receipt of the reply, the government was in a fix. They do not know what to do. In this situation, comrades, the chief labor commissioner once again intervened and convened a joint discussion, a conciliation proceedings on the 9th of October 2020. We convened a meeting of our all the 41 ordnance factory unions, president and general secretaries through video conference. We thoroughly discussed with them about the preparations, our strength, our weakness, everything was discussed. After listening the views of the 41 ordnance factories leaders, then we had a discussion with our office bearers of the Federation through video conference. Then we had a, again a meeting of the three federations. Of course, we used to invite CDRA also. And then we worked out our strategy and we were prepared to place our arguments, our logic, our justification before the CLC. Unfortunately, some organizations openly came with a declaration that they are not going to participate in the strike. Uh, they will be attending the factory when we are all striking. But the matter of satisfaction is the branches of those organizations in all the 41 Northern factories took a different position they took a decision that it is a matter of life and death. The demands are not for a particular cadre. The demand is for saving the defense industry from sale, from closure, from liquidation. Therefore, they took a decision that they all will participate in the strike. Whatever happens, let it happen. I salute them also. Now, 
on the ninth all of you know all the federation leaders the six leaders who participated in the conciliation proceedings have effectively placed their views before the CFC and all of you must have seen and listened to the arguments to the way we have the way we have presented before the CLC especially comrade S.N. Patel president of the federation and myself at least we are satisfied we have done justice to our cause we have done justice to the employees of the ordnance factories who are looking towards us that the leadership will be saviors the leadership will protect us the leadership will not surrender before the government and we have taken all pain with all sincerity with all commitment with all devotion to protect your interest before the clc proceedings a settlement has been reached the minutes have been issued and based on that settlement the independent strike has been deferred for the time being comrades it is not a victory it is not a success government has not gone back from corporatization but within the legal framework of industrial dispute act when the conspiracy of the government to declare our strike as illegal failed, then they took plea that under section 22 of the Industrial Dispute Act, when a conciliation proceeding is pending, we cannot go for a strike. They thought that they are only clever enough to put forth the views like this. But then we insisted that you record a failure report because two conciliations already over for the present strike and one conciliation has already taken place in August 2019. So three conciliation proceedings are pending. How much more time you will be requiring? Therefore, under the provisions of the ID Act, you record a failure report. The CLC has to record a failure report. You forward the failure report to the government. Let the government take a decision under the same provisions of ID Act. But the Chief Labor Commissioner was insisting that we have not assembled here for a failure report. Let us have an open mind. Let us try to resolve the issue. Let us come forward to discuss and sort it out. He told we are prepared, but the government is not prepared. Government is not yielding even an inch. So what is the fund in prolonging this negotiation, this conciliation for months together? Let us record a failure report and finish it off. Then let the law take its own course of action. But since CLC was going on insisting, then we told if section 22 of the Industrial Dispute Act is applicable to the trade unions and the workers, then section 33.1 is applicable to the employer. In our case, the Department of Defense Production, Ministry of Defense is our employer. So, he has to accept that he will abide by section 33.1. And what does section 33.1 says? Pending a conciliation proceeding, the employer cannot make any change. The employer cannot alter the service conditions. The employer cannot take any further move on the dispute which we have raised in the strike. So therefore, we told, if section 22 is applicable to me as a worker, Section 33.1 is applicable to the employer, the Department of Defense Production. So he also should not move an inch. Today, whatever is the position, that has to continue. Let us have negotiation. Let us have discussion. If the discussion fails, then it has to again come back to the conciliation officer. The conciliation officer has to record a failure report. 
the government has to take a decision to refer it to central government industrial tribunal this is the process of the law the workers are not standing before the government with a begging bowl the law of the land within the framework of the id act 1947 the government has to go if this is acceptable then let us have a settlement that after discussion you know comrades the meeting started at 11:30 in the morning it went up to 4:30 then a break of one hour for preparing the minutes then another one hour discussing each and every word in the minutes and for finalizing and finally this settlement has been reached so let us be very clear comrade let us not have any doubt in our mind the strike only is deferred the struggle against the corporatization of the ordnance factories is continuing the government has not withdrawn its decision but according to the settlement the government cannot further proceed in implementing its decision unless and until the negotiations are completed and the conciliation proceedings comes to a natural end in accordance with the law therefore rumors are being spread sometimes tv channels debates are going on every day some newspaper reports are coming let us not get disturbed of all these things let us have a clear understanding the cabinet has taken a decision during july 2020 to convert the ordnance factories into a corporation the cabinet has decided to appoint an empowered committee of group of ministers with the terms of reference for corporatizing the ofb is also still there the government has taken a decision to appoint a consultant for recommending the procedure for implementation that is also there nothing has been withdrawn the the, the impact of section 331 settlement is the government cannot further proceed with its implementation processes of corporatization till the discussion with the secretary dp the discussion with the empowered group of ministers takes place and finally the conciliation proceeding has to be concluded till then the government cannot proceed with its decision we also cannot go ahead with our strike this is the declared legal position my dear comrades therefore let us not uh, worry about what our rumors are being spread ah many comrades are asking us how can you believe this government the government has violated all the previous assurances what is the guarantee now also they will not violate even with the, all these settlement and uh, agreement reached in the presence of a chief labor commissioner under the id act the government may violate and this government is known for that then what you will do comrades that is what the three federations have declared if the government goes back we are open our struggle we can always revive our indefinite strike we can always go with our education we have created a public momentum in this country all of you have approached all the political leaders of the country you have all met more than hundreds of mps and mlas in our country our comrades have gone to the villages deep interior villages to the markets and have obtained lakhs of signatures in a memorandum addressed to the prime minister that please call, don't corporate these ordnance factories so therefore comrades the federations are not going to sit quiet and we are not sitting quiet we are vigilant we are watching each and every step and every developments what is happening in the government as all of you know our position has been very clearly told to the government you are government you are having majority you can take whatever decision you want but that doesn't mean the 80000 employees of this ordnance factories are going to accept your decision which is arbitrarily dictated on us 
we have rejected that through our strike ballot demand, strike ballot decision, mandate, and we have conveyed our message to the government with the intensified serious preparations we have made for the indefinite strike. Therefore, comrades, I think that I have clarified the doubts in your mind. I am only concluding that the strike only is temporarily deferred. Our struggle against the corporatization is not deferred. That is an ongoing process. It is a long drawn battle. We will bring all patriotic citizens into the fold of this agitation and we will carry forward our movement for saving, for protecting our 219 years Indian Autumn factories and our service as a defense civilian employee, as a central government employee. Thank you very much, comrades. Wait for our next phase of agitation. Thank you, comrades.